Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included. In today's episode, I would like to get away from the farm for just a moment in order to tend to this copper volcano. Oh yes, today we're gonna play around with a bunch of ideas and hopefully in the end we will have a reliable source of copper all the time. My problem at the moment is if we check this out, the next activity is gonna be in 5 cycles. So either we build everything that we need for this contraption in 5 cycles, including pumping out the polluted oxygen here. The eruption period is only 44 seconds, so theoretically we should be able to do something about that. Uh, we then have a little bit of a downtime, we also have lots of polluted water in order to start cooling this down in the beginning so we can do the building. But I don't want to wait the active period, it's like 87 cycles. No sir, no, we already want to profit from the active cycles today. So first things first, let's think about our dimensions. We are going to need a steam turbine room on the top here. So essentially we're going to make this room with the volcano a steam room in which we're going to have the first cooling down phase. Though looking at this, I wonder if we could make this endeavor a little less stressful by just having a bunch of tasks like so. So we're going to have three tasks on either side of the volcano. Actually, we might not even need the other side. We could just wrap up the build like so. That should be fine. Let's build a bunch of ladders there. Our steam turbine would then probably go into this spot. And we still have the space to set up an auto sweeper. So that is definitely something we're gonna need. Made out of steel probably. Or even niobium. Now uh, let's try to go with steel. Yeah, we might be able to get away with it. We're then gonna have our thermo aqua tuner right there with the input on the left side. We're gonna have a liquid pipe thermo sensor right in front of the input of the aqua tuner. The automation wire should probably be made out of iron. Actually, let me check that iron. Yeah, definitely high enough melting point should be good. Actually, thinking about this, I might want to expand the room to the other side still because I need a little bit more space to cycle all of the materials to get it down to a certain temperature. So I think what I might want to do is just expand this slightly, build the ladder right there. So we have a little bit more space and then we're gonna cycle the entire material. And we just have to remember to build the rails out of steel in the hopes of not immediately destroying everything. We're also gonna need to take care of a source of power, which, oh no, it's quite far away. Um, let's just use this main power line. We're gonna drag this down here and I guess enter right through this tile. We will then be continuing with iron as a material going... Hmm, let's see, yeah, we probably want to go up there and then do we want to use steel for this? I mean, it's not technically touching the volcano, but still, uh, above the volcano, I want to use steel, just in case. And then we deconstruct this one as well and build another joint plate in order to supply the steam turbine with power. Or actually the other way around, the steam turbine is going to provide power to my system. Okay, I guess it's time to unpause for the first time in order to get some of this stuff built and see how we do. Oh, okay, there we go. It already happened. I cannot use granite ladders for this. Okay, we have to go with igneous rock or something and then build ladder downwards so we can access everything. But this should be cooling down very soon. Yeah, that's what I thought. It doesn't look good. On the other side, the plus side is we only have steam in this room at the moment, but I guess that's not gonna last for long. Right then, another thing we're gonna need is a conveyor loader and we also need to make this out of steel. We could put this right above the aqua tuner. Mm. Actually, maybe we want to put this on the other side. That would probably make more sense. So we also have to destroy at least these two tiles. I'm gonna destroy everything and let the polluted water do a little bit of a cooling job. It's still 800 degrees in here. Ah, there we go. Okay, alright, that's gonna be much better. Mmm, yes. So far so good. We still have 4.4 cycles. We're actually making good time, I think. Let's go with the conveyor loader made out of steel. Place that right here. And now for the conveyor rails, I think we can go with iron for the most part. And what we want to do is lead it through this room as wiggly as possible in order to exchange as much heat as possible before we are gonna send it through the second phase of cooling. So that would look something like this and then all the tasks that are covered by the volcano we want to made out of steel, just in case. Then we are gonna continue our endeavors with iron and finish it like so. It will then go up through the second cooling phase. This design, this is inspired by a YouTuber 
who unfortunately doesn't do any YouTube videos anymore. It's Tony Advanced. It's very unlikely that we're gonna end up with the exact same thing that he did because I'm trying to build it out of memory and just what I've learned from his videos. But I wanted to give you a tip on if you want to watch a couple of tutorials that are really advanced, you should watch Tony Advanced. Next up, let's try to build the water pipes. We can do that with Igneous Rock. What we want to achieve is a cooling loop in order to cool down the steam turbine room. And we're actually also gonna use that as our third cooling phase. So let's just start from the sensor. We're going into the aqua tuner. We then want to check for a certain temperature. If the temperature is too high, we send it through the aqua tuner and then it's going to go up directly into the steam room. So we should be able to do something like that. Let me see how large do I want to make this? Hmm. We need to be careful because there's still the exit pipe from the steam turbine itself. So I would assume we are leading the water from the steam turbine out directly back into this room. However, we want to do something special with that. And that's what I thought is so ingenious about this design. So this would be a wall. Just going to put it there so nobody gets confused. Then we're gonna swap to radiant liquid pipes and we wanna cool down this entire steam turbine room. Now, considering we're probably gonna make this a little bit larger here. Mm, yeah, let's make it a nice even square with the wall. So we can just build the wall like so. Uh, let's actually do that right away. Something like that. So this would go in here and then we wanna return back. Um, let's see, we could actually just bridge over from here. So one bridge like so, and then we go back into our sensor. Hmm. Actually, that's not a good position. I'm gonna need a little bit more space. So instead, what we should be doing is going down. And uh, now let me think, that's gonna be complicated. Let's assume the water is at a good temperature and we don't need to send it through the aqua tuner. In this case, it would be going down and then we want to bridge up. That is an important step. So I guess the best way back through the loop would be to just go down and up into the sensor here again. This gives us a little bit of leeway to play with the upper portion. So what we could be doing is bridge up here like so and then add yet another bridge. Do something like that and those guys would have to be connected. And even though it looks horribly complicated, I believe that is going to allow us to have a loop that doesn't fail. On the top right here, we actually want to add something. The steam turbine produces 2000 grams of water. Now, if you have only 1000 grams of water in a packet, it is not going to break the pipe due to state changes. Using a liquid valve, we could make this our advantage. Now, that's going to be annoying to power, isn't it? Yes, definitely. Anyways, we still have to do it. Set up a liquid valve right there. Actually, it might not need to be powered thinking about it. If we set this to 1000 grams, then only 1000 grams are gonna exit the pipe. And I actually want to make this a radiant pipe. We can make this out of iron. Uh, the top portion shouldn't be radiant, just uh, the lower portion right there. So we wanna make two radiant pipes and we also wanna do the same thing right here. And now we're simply gonna connect this like so. So 1000 grams is gonna exit through the valve and the other 1000 grams are gonna exit through the other slot. We will then take the conveyor rails and lead it through these four tiles. Uh, let me actually go like this. So we have the radiant pipes here in the back and then the rails going through these tiles. And we are then going to cover this with a bunch of metal tiles in order to make the exchange of heat happen. The rail is then going to continue into the steam room. And right here we wiggle it around once again in order to get the final temperature. And we will regulate the top temperature here using the aqua tuner, of course. So the same temperature we want the steam turbine at is going to be the temperature for the metal that exits the contraption. We should then be able to just wrap this up and I'm just going to leave a little bit of space free in order. Still 219 degrees here. <laughs> But we should be able to reconnect the wire. A bunch of it actually got melted and I ended up with, uh, well, molten lead. What can I say? Now my dupes have plenty of stuff to build. Let's see if we can wrap this up in time. Oh, another thing before I forget, I need a bunch of temp shift plates. I'm gonna install, uh, let's see, one, two, three plates right here. And then I probably want to install plates here at the volcano level. Yeah, let's do one, two, three, like so. Oh man, we might actually not be in time. We only have 4.3 cycles left to go and still plenty of things to build. 
Oh, before I forget, in order to dump the water back into the room, of course, we're going to do that and then set up a bunch of liquid vents. Now, overheat temperature shouldn't be a problem with them. Wait a second, that's not going to work. The output of the steam engine is going to be 95 degrees anyways, and this liquid valve has an overheat temperature of 75 degrees. So we need to build this out of cold amalgam for it to work. I'm actually going to seize the opportunity since I have so much water in here uh, so that I don't have to build a pump in order to pump out the gases that I don't want. We are then going to convert everything to steam and then what we are going to do is pump out the water that we don't want. So we are going to make a little addition. Uh, let me actually see. Yeah, it's probably going to be good enough just with an insulated pipe and then we're going to vent out the liquid this way. And that should be a good solution to get rid of the extra water we don't want in there. We want to set the liquid valve made out of cold amalgam to 1000 grams. As for the upper room, we will have to be a little more creative. I think what I'm going to do is actually access it from the top. So we could set up a little liquid lock here. Something like this should work nicely. Then we're going to open this up. Let's actually leave two spaces free so we can use a big pump. There we go. This should actually do nicely. And then we're going to pump everything out. Uh, actually, let's set up the pump already. Want a pump right here. And of course, we also want to power it up. Looks like we're getting a little bit lower on food. Uh, my farms aren't being attended to anymore. Yeah, I set up the priority for the farms as well as the cooking stove, the electric grill. And another thing we can do is maybe kill one row of hatchlings right there. Should give us a healthy supply of barbecue. There it is, my liquid lock is in place. I had to exchange the pump with gold amalgam. Once we finished everything below, we can open this up and hopefully pump out the rest of the gases. Actually thinking about this, eventually I want to fill this up with hydrogen. So I think we want to prepare this already. And this can probably happen with normal granite pipes. Since this is only going to be supplied with hydrogen for one time. We could take the hydrogen right here. This is actually a leftover piece that I haven't used yet. So I'm just going to build this pipe all the way over. And once we have the hydrogen we need, we can deconstruct it again. Okay, there we go. We're almost done. I had to set up the priority a little bit. Otto, for some reason, is hurt. And the volcano is going to erupt in 1.6 cycles. Oh, uh, we might just be able to do this, guys. Now, I would love for my duplicates to pick everything up. But I think more efficient would be to just set the conveyor loader to pick up everything. And then let the auto sweeper take care of that. So, technically, we should be able to close this off. Did I forget anything? This is my cooling loop. We still need to fill this up. Maybe that is something we should do. Let's have a liquid pump. Or maybe, if I'm not mistaken... No, there is no pump nearby us there. Well, we could take this pump. Why not? Though, this is a mixture of polluted water and normal water. Not sure I want that. Yeah, I think it's gonna be less hassle to just set up a pump here. Holy cow, I actually didn't build this in a way so it's convenient to fill up. So we're gonna make something temporary like this. I definitely want to fill this up with a bridge so it doesn't fill up the loop entirely. And then I want to make sure it doesn't go through the aqua tuner. So we just set something unrealistic, let's say below 100 or minus 100 degrees. Then we want to send the green signal so it will never send the green signal and we can fill up the shorter version of the loop. There we go. The lower room has been sealed off just in time. I think, yeah, it's 0 0.5 cycles. Wow. Okay. I'm actually glad about that. Maybe I should have taken apart these insulated tiles, but for some reason, I wanted the aqua tuner to be visually separated from the volcano. Now, we still have to think about where we actually lead the items, and I would like to lead them back in order to drop them somewhere here. So probably at this point, we are going to introduce a transit tube axis. And there we go. The volcano is actually going for it. Now, it's going to take a long time to get rid of this water, but we shall be patient. And in our case, since we haven't constructed everything just yet, I think this is also a good thing. But uh, there we go. It is now going to spew out some metal. Come on. For now, I would say we're going to let the items drop. But eventually, I would like to have a little bit of a buffer. So items are going to be dropped at the same rate the volcano produces them. But for the time being, I just want to collect everything that's still down there. So what I'm also going to tell this guy is to collect everything. There we go. We have some water going into the cooling loop. The polluted water. That is a good thing. I just want to wait until it is filled up and then we're going to disable this pump again. And there we go. That's already it. I almost missed it. My items are actually also going for it. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. 
So this is the entirety of the cooling loop, but obviously we don't want to output the items as quickly. In the beginning, we can do this since we uh, still don't have the steam. Actually, now that we have that, we could set this to a realistic value. We want to send the polluted water through the aqua tuner if it exceeds a certain temperature. Wait, is the liquid bridge out of the way? Yeah, we are not going to add new water. So as soon as the water is, let's say, above a cozy 45 degrees building temperature. Yeah, that should be technically good. So above 45 degrees, we want to cool it down and anything below that should be fine. In the end, this is going to be the same temperature our items are going to end up with. Hopefully, that is at least the intention. Actually, another thing I wonder about is could I make this a vacuum by filling this first out with a bunch of tiles? Because that would be my preferred solution. Let's also up the priority on this. Get this finally done, guys. Alright then, the steam turbine room is now separated. I also expanded this slightly so we can uh, kind of dig over here and maybe build a ladder system down so I can keep this room clean and nice. Right here, as I said, we want to set up a bunch of metal tiles. I think we should be able to go with iron here too. Mm, yeah, let's do iron. So that will be one, two, and then I want to set up one right here as well. And then I want to still leave myself access to these two tasks in order to be able to build the valve. And then this should be a vacuum, making everything a little bit easier. All right, now we have a vacuum here. I'm trying to put back the liquid valve. Hopefully they can build it through the tiles here. I'm hoping they can build it. I, oh, they, wow, did you see that? He built it through the tiles here. Otto, you need to go into a cart. Yeah, you definitely need to rest a little bit. Not sure what the heck he's doing all the time. So 1000 grams, that should be set. And unfortunately, I cannot sweep these up. So that's going to be a little bit of a beauty mistake. But since it's symmetrical, it's actually not even bothering me that much. Okay, looks like they cannot actually do this work errand. So I'm going to forget about my idea to have a vacuum here. At least this way I can sweep this up. Alrighty, I fueled up my next rocket. We should be able to launch this right away. Yeah, let's freaking do this. Uh, wait, something is missing. Gantry? Ah, come on. We want to go to the same gas giant in order to get some more iso resin, And that's exactly what we're going to do. 3, 2, 1, blast off. Create more petroleum. Oh, actually, my petroleum is completely full already again. Oh, no, this is not good. Not good at all. Wait a second, what we want to do is fill up our petroleum lines, which are also full. Okay, that essentially means we need to disconnect the power here again. Oh, this is not even running. I'm producing so much power at the moment. This is amazing. So we want to be careful about this. What we could do is say, uh, let me check this again here. Yeah, sends a red signal when reservoir is high threshold. So what we have to do is probably use a NOT gate. Uh, let's set this to, let's say, 90%. Then we're going to take an automation wire and just lead this all the way to our door. That should be fine. Though, of course, somewhere we have to set up a NOT gate since it's sending a red signal when it is full. And of course, we want the signal to be green so the door opens. So whenever this reservoir is completely full, we are going to permanently open up this door. This is also a temporary solution because eventually otherwise we are going to overheat. This already has a high temperature and if we don't use the temperature then we are just gonna keep on accumulating it. Ah, there we go. I think we are done. Ah, thankfully. Okay, finally we have achieved a vacuum here. This means we can go ahead and deconstruct this pump setup again. Uh, let's be careful about this. We might first want to close this off, just to be completely sure. Set and done. We are then gonna reconnect this in order to fill up the hydrogen, which should now come from the other side. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Beautiful. So yeah, unfortunately, we will not see this contraption in full action in today's episode. This is gonna take maybe 100 cycles to heat up to the right temperature. But then once this happened, we want to make sure that we lead some of the water outside so that we can reduce the amount of steam we have in this room. There we go. Hydrogen is incoming. I just want to fill this up to 2000 kilograms. No, 2 kilograms per tile. This actually already happened. So we can cut this off and this is going to go back to where it came from. We can also deconstruct everything that is on the top here. We don't need it anymore. Okay, great. This actually went much smoother than I anticipated. One thing I want to do, just as a reminder, I want to do that and, well, not priority. I actually want to cut these pipes like so. 
We have so much water in the steam room that I'm pretty sure we can get rid of most of it. And I will just have to observe this and kind of, you know, check out the temperatures. Right now it's 45 degrees, so it's going to take a long, long time to even get this to 100 degrees. Alrighty, in order to wrap up this video, I want to make sure that you understood what I intended with this and the three cooling phases. We are starting right here with the copper volcano producing copper at a so high temperature that it is usually molten. However, with the amount of steam we're going to have in here, it's going to be immediately solidified and dropped to the floor. It's then going to be picked up by the auto sweeper right here and then it's going to go through the first cooling phase. So this room right here is going to be somehow below 200 degrees. That at least is my intention. That means all of the metal is going to be cooled down to something below 200 degrees. Then this part right here, if you remember, is being cooled by the steam engine output itself, which is 95 degrees. So these tiles are eventually going to be around 95 degrees. And that essentially means the second cooling phase is this one right here, where we are going to get close to below 100 degrees. Then the third cooling phase is going to be this room itself, and we are cooling this room using the thermal aqua tuner. So whatever we set this sensor to, this should be the temperature of the room right here, and therefore also the temperature of the items that are eventually going to leave on the outside right there. Now, in order to complete this, we would want to make a little automation, for instance, using a buffer gate. Now, I'm not going to do that right away, but I'm going to show you the intention of it. So we have a buffer gate and we are also going to need a not gate. Uh, where is it? Not gate should be facing the other way. And then finally, we're going to need a filter gate that is going to be connected to the actual output. If we then take automation wire and combine this, we can take the signal that is being produced right here and continue this into a filter gate. Essentially, we can use the buffer gate in order to set the amount of seconds we want to wait before sending another signal. And then a short signal is going to be emitted from here. And of course, we want to make sure that the signal lasts for a certain amount of time. So this is what the filter gate is for. We will then set this to probably half a second or so and then every, let's say, one minute or so, we're going to send a green signal for half a second. So this pipe is going to be open for half a second and something is going to drop out. Now we just have to figure out how much time we require to produce enough copper in order to fill up one slot on the rails. But there we go. We will see about that probably in one of the next episodes. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you soon. Bye-bye.